Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. Now we're going to continue our lesson in 4.6, the second portion. And this time we are going to learn how to complete the squares, then to solve the equation. So first, some prior knowledge. We have learned that formula back in unit 1. Uh, p squared plus or minus 2pq plus q squared equals parentheses p plus or minus q then squared. Something I want to emphasize on is this middle term. So our end result is something squared, and that is called a perfect square trinomial, or perfect square factor. In order to achieve that, we have to make sure the middle term is q times the front number, then times the back number. And when I say the front and back, I meant the square root of both numbers. That's the requirement. So if we think another way, if you're trying to figure out what is this last number, you kind of need to use the middle term, get rid of the 2, then also get rid of the p to get what is the q, then you square it. So now let's have a look at an example. So the x squared is given, which corresponds to the p squared. This negative 12x, so basically you can write down p equals x, but this negative 12x is 2pq, and we're trying to find our q. So we're going to divide by 2, divided by 2, and then we got negative 6x equals pq. And we already know that p is actually just x. So now we just get rid of the x on both sides. We see negative 6 is q. But we want this number c, which actually corresponds to the q squared. So that means c is actually q squared, which is negative 6 squared, which is 36. So I just went the longer route to explain to you why this is the case. Now let's look at another example and see if there's any shorter way we can actually do this. The middle number is negative 3x. And we see there's no number in the front. So all we need to do is take the middle number, negative 3x, uh, negative 3, and divide by 2, which gives us the q that we need. As for our c, we just need to square that. Negative 3 over 2 squared is going to give us a positive 9 over 4. So we take the middle number, divide it by 2, and then we just square it. That's going to give us the last number that we need. And we will see some more complicated example when we actually have a front number. Now let's look at some steps to solve these equations by completing the square. First step, make sure the leading coefficient is 1. If it's not, divide everything by the leading coefficient. So the leading coefficient in this case is a 2. We're going to divide everything by the 2. We have r squared plus 3 halves r plus 17. Next, step two, move the constant to the right side so the left side looks like x squared plus bx. So the constant we have is the 17. We're going to move that to the right side by subtracting 17 on both sides. So we have r squared plus 3 halves r equals negative 12. Next, step three. We're going to take the middle coefficient and divide it by 2. So the middle coefficient is 3 halves. We're going to divide it by 2. 3 halves divided by another 2 is actually 3 fourths. Step 4, we are going to square what we just found. So 3 fourths squared, that's going to give us 9 over 16. And we're going to add it to both sides. So now the equation actually becomes r squared plus 3 halves r plus 9 over 16 equals negative 12 plus 9 over 16. We are going to factor the left side. And here's something that might make things easier. Because we just found this number that was uh, 3 fourth. All we need to do is take an r, which is the p part, and then take a number that we just found, which is 3 fourth, that's the q, and square it. Even if you need to factor it, that's going to give you the same thing. As for the right side, negative 12 plus 9 over uh, 16, that is going to be, I'm going to write that up there, negative 12 plus 9 over 16. That is going to be negative, 
192 plus 9 over 16, which is negative 183 over 16. Negative 183 over 16. Last step, we are going to solve that equation by taking square root. So let's take square root on both sides. Square root plus minus. So we have r plus 3 fourths equals plus minus. There's a negative sign, so that guarantees to have an r, I mean i. Square root of 183 over square root of 16. That is square root of 183 on the top, square root of 16, which is a 4 on the bottom. Okay. And the top cannot be simplified, so that's what we have. Lastly, minus 3 fourths on both sides. So our final answer, r equals negative 3 fourths plus minus square root of 183 over 4 i. And that is our final answer. Let's see if I can write it clearer. That is square root of 183. Okay. R equals negative 3 fourths plus minus square root of 183 over 4. Next, let's look at more examples. Example 1. The co leading coefficient is already just a 1. We don't need to do anything. Next step, we are going to move the number to the right side. So add 19 on both sides. We have x squared plus 8x equals 19. And it might be better if you actually leave a space so that you can just fill it out later. So equals 19. Next, we're going to use the middle number, 8 divided by 2. That's going to give us a 4. You're going to square it. 4 squared is 16. So we have x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals 19 plus 16. The left side can be factored to be x and then this number plus 4 squared equals 35. When we solve it, we're going to square root both sides plus minus. So x plus 4 equals plus minus square root of 35. That cannot be simplified. So minus 4 on both sides. x equals negative 4 plus minus square root of 35. Now example 2. We are going to get rid of the number plus 15 on both sides. x squared plus 5x equals 9. Next, take the middle number, 5 divided by 2, and then we're going to square it. That's going to give us 25 over 4. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 25 over 4 equals 9 plus 25 over 4. Left side, we're just going to take that number, so x plus 5 over 2 squared equals the right side, 36 plus 25 on the top is 61 over now to solve it, square root of both sides, plus minus x plus 5 over 2 equals plus minus square root of 61 over 2. Then we just need to subtract 5 over 2 on both sides. Final answer, x equals negative 5 over 2 plus minus square root of 61 over 2. Next, example 3, example 4. Same process, we're going to get rid of the 2 first on every single thing. Divided by 2, divided by 2. We're going to get x squared minus 5 over 2x plus 3 halves over, I mean, equals 0. Now we're going to get rid of that number, minus 3 halves, minus 3 halves. So we get x squared minus 5 halves x equals negative 3 halves. Next, the number that we need is a negative 5 halves. So negative 5 halves over 2 is negative 5 fourths. Then we're going to square it, negative 5 fourths squared becomes a positive 25 over 16. So write it out, x squared minus 5 halves x plus 25 over 16 equals negative 3 halves plus 25 over 16. 
<laughs> and again, we are just going to use that number we have. So x minus 5 over 4, and then squared equals the right side after you simplify it is going to be 1 over 16. Now we're going to square root both sides to solve. x minus 5 fourth plus minus. That equals plus minus 1 over 16. Square root of that is 1 fourth. So we're going to end up with x equals negative, I mean positive 5 over 4 plus minus 1 fourth. So we need to go one step further because apparently we can actually simplify that. 5 over 4 plus 1 fourth is 6 over 4, which is 3 halves. The other one, uh, 5 fourth minus 1 fourth is actually just a 1. So these are our two final answers. Next question, divide everything by 3. We got rid of the front number, so we have x squared plus 11 over 3x plus 1 third equals negative 5 over 3. Now we are going to get rid of the number, so minus 1 third on both sides. We have x squared plus 11 over 3x, which equals to negative 2. Next, we're going to take the middle number, which is 11 over 3 over 2. That's going to give us 11 over 6. Square both. Square uh, the number. That's 121 over 36. So next step, x squared plus 11 over 3x plus 121 over 36 equals negative 2 plus 121 over 36. Now we can actually simplify it. x, the number we have is 11 over 6, so plus 11 over 6, then square. The right side is a negative 72 on the top plus 121. That is 50 over 36, or it can be simplified to be 18 with a 25 on the top. Actually, it's not 50. It is 49. In order to solve, we're going to square root both sides, plus minus. So we have x plus 11 over 6 equals plus minus 7 over 6. Yeah. Move it over, our two answers, x equals negative 11 over 6 plus minus 7 over 6. So if you finish solving them, one of them is going to be a negative 11 over 6 plus 7 over 6, so negative 4 over 6, which is negative 2 thirds. The other negative 11 over 6 minus 7 over 6 is negative 18 over 6, so it's going to be negative 3. That is example 4. Next, example 5. Nothing is on the left side, so we don't need to move, but we just need to divide everything by the 8. So we're going to end up with x squared minus 2x equals 3a. Now we need to figure out the middle number is negative 2, divided by 2, which is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is just a 1. So we have x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 3a plus 1. Now we get x minus 1 squared. We just take this number. The right side is 11 over 8. When we square root both sides to solve it, we're going to end up with x minus 1 equals plus minus square root of 11 over square root of 8. If you multiply that top and bottom by square root of 8, we're going to end up with plus minus square root of uh, 81, I mean 88 over. Eight, which can still be simplified to uh, 2 square root of 22 over 8 minus, so it's plus minus square root of 22 over 4. Then we're going to move over to 1, so add 1 on both sides. x equals 1 plus minus square root of 22 over 8. That's the final answer. Next one. There's nothing to divide, so we just need to get rid of the 66 on both sides. So we have x squared minus 14x equals negative 64. 
Next, we are going to use the middle number to find what we need. Negative 14 over 2 is negative 7. Negative 7 squared is 49. 5x squared minus 14x plus 49 is negative 64 plus 49. We have what we need is right there. x minus 7 squared equals negative 15. Now we're going to square root both sides to solve it. So x minus 7 equals plus minus square root of 15. We have a negative number, so i. Final answer, x equals 7 plus minus square root of 15 i. The last two examples, number 7. We're going to divide everything by 7. We have x squared minus 20 over 7x plus 97 over 7 over 9 over 7. I'm going to get rid of the 97 over 7 on both sides. We have x squared minus 20 over 7x equals, that is going to be negative 88 over 7. Next, we're going to need to uh, figure out the middle number. So negative 20 over 7 divided by 2 is negative 10 over 7. Negative 10 over 7 squared is 149. Now we're going to need to write down the number. So it's x squared minus 20 over 7x. And then plus 100 over 49 equals negative 88 over 7 plus 100 over 49. The number we need is right there, so it's x minus 10 over 7 squared which equals 2. 88 times 9 is negative, then plus 100. That's on the top. Uh, sorry, not times 9, is times 7. And then 49 on the bottom. That's going to give us uh, 616. Negative plus 100 over 49. So the right side is negative 516 over 49. Square root both sides to solve it. Plus minus. We're going to end up with x plus, uh, not plus, minus. 10 over 7 equals plus minus. The bottom is a 7. And the top after simplifying would be 2 square root of 129. And since we have a negative number right there, negative sign, so it's i. Final answer, just move that number over. x equals 10 over 7 plus minus 2 square root of 129 over 7 i. That is example 7. Example 8. Divide everything by 8. End up with x squared minus 2x plus 4 equals 9 over 8. We're going to subtract the 4 on both sides. x squared minus 2x equals, that is minus 32, so it's negative 23 over 8. The middle number we have is a negative 2. So negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. So negative 1 squared is 1 x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals negative 23 over 8. We actually want to put in parentheses. We need that number. x minus 1 squared is negative 15 over 8. Now we're going to simplify by square root both sides. Plus minus. So x minus 1 equals plus minus. We have a uh, minus sign right there, so it's going to be an i. Uh, square root of 15 over square root of 8. That's going to be so times, uh, first we can simplify the bottom to be square root of 2, square root of 2. Square root of 15 still on the top. Times both the top and bottom by square root of 2. So we end up with 4 on the bottom and square root of 30 on the top. So square root of 30 over 4. Final answer, add a 1 over x equals 1 plus minus square root of 30 over 4i.
That is everything for completing the square. Thank you.